Well, in our lead, it seems that being Fed Chair Emeritus means never having to say you're sorry or be out of a job. Ayn Rand accolade Alan Greenspan, who for years buried the signs of an economy overrun with speculation, has a new gig with Paulson and Company. Apparently, John Paulson, the guy at the center of the lie to your client scandal at Goldman Sachs, has a plan for the man who admits he led the country astray for 20 years at the Fed. John Paulson wants Greenspan to be on guard against the, quote, potential for and severity of a U.S. recession. Makes you think these guys know something we don't? Are you reassured? Well, while we're talking reassuring, take a look at this. We are done backing up. Yeah. Done. Not one more inch. Now this is a quintessentially southern thing, this oh hell no. When you hear it, where I come from, you know that somebody's gonna get beat, stabbed, or shot. And the guy that takes the beating, the knife blade, or the bullet, undoubtedly deserves it. I'm calling on the government to understand that there are going to be consequences to pushing people like us any farther back. More Ruby Ridges, more Wacos. Precisely. Well, there was not one but two Second Amendment rallies in Washington on, the, on Monday. One by those mealy-mouthed concealed weapons folks, and then one by these guys who think that you should be able to take an open weapon into just about any place. Congress, high school, the supermarket, you name it. Maybe one reason this guy said he couldn't back up was because there's another pack right behind him with guns. But that hell no language, does it make you laugh or cry? To talk about it, John Flugelsang, he's here, he's a comedian, he's an, art, he's an actor, He's a many-time graduate of Bill Maher and you name it, what else? So glad to have you, John. Thanks I enjoyed for seeing in. you in the Bill Maher Academy last week, Laura. <laughs> well, I was just in your footsteps, walking in your footsteps, John. So what do you think? Do you, you watch this and you laugh or you cry? Uh, I watch this and I, I laugh and I cry. Am I allowed to do both? Yeah, sure. um, you know, it, it's like one of the many situations in American life that makes you feel more than one emotion at the same time. Uh, the biggest joke here is that this is all about fundraising. I subscribe to all of the NRA's fund, fund uh, uh, email letters. Oh. And every day, uh, you might not know this, but the only thing Eric Holder thinks about is taking your gun away, Laura. That's pretty much all he focuses on. I thought that was right. And it's all just about fundraising. It's a lot like how the abortion debate has uh, evolved in this country. Um, the Republican Party will never allow abortion to become illegal because it's the single greatest fundraising tool they have. Mm -hmm. The flip side is the Democratic Party wants you to think your abortion rights are this close to being taken away because that's a big fundraising tool as well. Well, I'm with you on that, but what about the language here? Maybe even if the leadership are looking for funding off this, some of the followers are talking about hell no and Waco and that's sort yes, of stuff. Yes, it's terrific hearing all these people who both want America to be a Christian nation discussing their right to inflict violence when they feel like it. Uh, you know, this is a bunch of men who uh, like fondling their pistols in public and want to be seen doing so. Oh, there's going to be women gun owners writing to you now. Well, and God bless them. But look, I, I, I'm on the side of the Second Amendment, and a lot of progressives don't like to acknowledge it, but the Second Amendment does give you the right to bear arms to protect yourself against the government, and they have every right to do so. No one's trying to take these rights away. The Democrats are, have, have foolishly uh, backed down from this issue over the past couple of years. Uh, it's really been something they've dropped. Gun control was really big for them in the 80s. They've really backed down, especially after Columbine, it's a bit bizarre. Um, most Americans would have no issue with waiting periods and with background checks. But this is an area that the Democrats have decided they don't want to fight well, this Well, maybe battle. they're scared of guys like these. But you talked about Christian nation. The Catholic Church has been having a few challenges recently, and you've got your own personal connections to that particular church. And I wanted you to weigh in on what's been going on. Uh, here's Cardinal Breton speaking recently. He's like the second in command. Um, he says it's not about celibacy, the sex abuse scandal that's been going on. It's something else. Many psychologists and psychiatrists have shown that there is no link between celibacy and paedophilia, but many others have shown, and I have been told recently, that there is a relationship between homosexuality and paedophilia. That is the truth. I read it in a document written by psychologists, so that is the problem. Written by psychologists? Gotta be true. Well, we know how much they respect science. Um, my mother is a former nun, and my father is a former Franciscan brother, so I grew up in a profoundly Catholic household. We used to have open casket reunions. Uh, uh, and, and my philosophy has come to be that I love Jesus, but I view him like I view Elvis. 
love the guy, scared of the fan clubs. Uh, <laughs> what the Cardinal fails to point out here is that the overwhelming majority, and this is across the board, every nation that's kept records on these, mm -hmm. the overwhelming majority of pederasts are heterosexual males. Yes, there are gay priests, but the dirty secret is a lot of them have boyfriends. They're not causing any problems. Now, when the Catholic Church made uh, celibacy the law, it was finalized in 1139 A.D. by Pope Innocent II, and they did it not because Christ was a bachelor and not because uh, sex was bad, but because the church was greedy and didn't want popes and priests and bishops uh, leaving their wealth and land to their children. It's a whole law based on greed. So if you are a quote-unquote conservative Catholic, uh, then you technically believe in married priests. The first pope, St. Peter, was gay. Uh, was not gay, I'm sorry. It was, it was right. it's different. I'm thinking of Paul. That's a whole other debate. Uh, and all the priests and popes and bishops over a thousand years were married. So technically, he's the radical. Married priesthood is the conservative The Pope was in Malta this week, and he's now calling his church wounded and a sinner church. I guess that's a step forward. Um, the people he met with, who were some of them victims of abuse themselves, said that they saw the pain in his eyes. And I don't want to be cynical, but do you think that's real pain about what's happened or fear that you know, Christopher Hitchens is going to come and arrest him. I'm sure it's both. I mean, the Pope also was falling asleep at Mass this weekend. You may have seen those pictures as well. So who knows? It may have been the pain of staying awake. He could be in an ambient uh, uh, haze. Um, I don't doubt that it's pained him a lot, but it's pained other people a lot more. And this church has got to do a lot more than make vague apologies a mere 12 years after rescinding papal infallibility. In the Vatican these days, PR has come to mean protecting rapists. And these are the people that taught me shame. Uh, you know, I, I have this mentality of like, let me get this straight, Father. If I touch myself, it's a mortal sin and I go to hell. But if you touch myself, it's a tragic mistake and you go to a new parish. It's a great chance for the for the Vatican to reformat the church, to rebrand the church, to come out and be in charge of decency and the leading voice of social justice in the world. I well, think they're just protecting themselves. Another powerful group that seemed to be doing a very bad job of rebranding is Goldman Sachs. You gave me a nice segue there. You would think they would want to be quiet right now after the SEC came out with the fraud charges against Goldman for backing against, betting against its own clients. But no, in the, week, in the news this week, $5 billion in bonuses they're not even waiting. This is Christmas, not even in July, but August, but April oh, yeah. for their people. What's going on? You know, they're not even trying to have the pretense of civility here. This is the American aristocracy. These are the people who thought from the time this country was founded that the wealthiest landowning white males were the only ones to be allowed to vote. And we're seeing the direct linkage to that in the outstanding, grotesque entitlement of these people. Um, if a bookie ripped you off like this, you'd have someone break his knees. And we're just seeing the reverse of, uh, of loan sharkism here. The Democratic Party, uh, shame on them if they can't move the middle class and working folks over to their side. Because you got guys protesting guns being taken away when they're not, but not this. It's the triumph of Fox News and that rich people pay Fox people to make middle class people blame poor people. There's a very good piece in Huffington Post today talking about the shorting of the American middle class, which I think is a good way of putting it. Mm -hmm. Finally, one of the other stories that caught my attention, and maybe yours too, is the story coming out of Philadelphia, the Lower Marion Public High School apparently took 56,000 photographs of students via laptops that those students had taken home. It was all supposedly some effort to track lost laptops, but the picture snapping continued way after the lost laptops were found. The pictures include pictures of kids asleep in their beds. Now, my question for you, the school has got to report to the school board May 3rd or May 5th, something like that. What the heck are they going to say? Well, two people are going to lose their jobs for this, the two that were in charge of this. One of whom is a, a, a woman administrator who's now on paid leave. Uh, she gets over $105,000 a year on paid leave. Uh, this is a public school, by the way. These students were given max. Um, I can take you to PS275 in, in Brownsville, Brooklyn, and show you where teachers have to park in the basketball courts because there's no parking lot. So this just speaks to the inequity of the system. But this is your tax dollars at lurk. Uh, it's the creepiest thing that we've seen in a long time, and it's a good argument for turning your computers off at night. The software does exist, folks. You're not safe from your computer spying on you. It also saves energy. John Fugelsang, yes. thanks so much for joining us. We'll put links to your work at our website. That's grittv.org. Have you back very soon. What a pleasure.